present question he is asking us the domain of a particular function the question is the domain of the function f of x is equal to log of x square plus x plus 1 to the base g plus sin of square root of x minus 1 the given function is f of x is equal to log of x square plus x plus 1 to the base g plus sin of root of x minus 1. That is the given function and the options are first option open interval minus 2 to 1, second option open interval minus 2 to infinity third option closed interval 1 to infinity and the fourth option none. To have the domain of the function to trace it carefully we have to keep two particular things in our mind one is x square plus x plus 1 must be strictly positive and square root of x minus 1 to be defined x minus 1 must be non-negative. So the first thing to observe is x square plus x plus 1 must be strictly positive. It is a very easy matter to observe the function with the x square plus x plus 1. It is a quadratic expression with the discriminant negative. That is b square minus 4s is nothing but 1 minus 4 is minus 3. It is strictly negative and the coefficient of x square is positive. Therefore, x square plus x plus 1 is always positive for all x belongs to R. So, no sufficient precaution need, be, need to be taken here to see that x square plus x plus 1 is positive. Secondly, the thing that we have to observe is x minus 1 must be greater than or equal to 0. x minus 1 must be greater than or equal to 0. That is, x must be greater than or equal to 1. Therefore, x belongs to closed interval 1 to infinity. Hence, the required domain is closed interval 1 to infinity. That is, the third option is the right option. In this question, a linear function that maps the set containing minus 2 to 2 onto the set 0 to 4 is. So, four options are given. The first option is f of x is equal to x minus 2. Second option is f of x is equal to 2 minus x. Third option is f of x is equal to 2 plus x. And the fourth option is both second and third options are correct. Let us first of all observe the domain. From minus 2 to 2, set containing minus 2 and 2 to the set containing 0 and 4. Moreover, we need to have the function that maps this set on to that set. Therefore, codomain must be equal to range. Let us observe. The first option is f of x is equal to x minus 2. Is it the suitable option or not? Let us see. What is f of minus 2? Minus 2 minus 2 is minus 4. Minus 4 is does not belong to the codomain given. Hence, surely this first option is the wrong option. Second one, f of x is equal to f of x is equal to 2 minus x. Let us examine whether this can be right or not. f of minus 2, minus 2, 2 minus of minus 2 is 4. Okay, minus 2 is mapped to 4. f of 0, 2 minus 0 is 2 minus 0 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. Therefore, first element is mapped to the second element second element is mapped onto the first element the function is defined and it is on to also therefore this might be a suitable option moreover third option is also given what is the third option f of x is equal to 2 plus x let us see what is f of minus 2 2 minus 2 is 0 f of 2 2 plus 2 0 so this can also be a right option hence the correct option the correct possible most appropriate is the fourth option that is second and third both are correct therefore the right option is the fourth option these two ways of defining the function f makes it on to from the domain containing the set minus 2 and 2 to the set containing 0 and 4. Therefore, the right option, the correct option is the fourth option. In the next question, 
he has given us two functions suppose f of x is equal to x plus 2 whole square for all x greater than or equal to minus 2 if g of x is the function whose graph is the reflection of the graph of f of x in the line y is equal to x then g of x is equal to he is asking he is asking the reflection of the reflection of f of x is equal to x plus 2 whole square f of x equal to x plus 2 whole square with respect to the line y is equal to x how to get the, the type of reflection now the easiest and the straight way to get the so called reflection is it can be obtained by just replacing x and y in the given function what i mean to say is which we generally we take f of x as some y so to have the reflection of this f of x let us replace interchange x and y here what are you going to get x is equal to y plus 2 whole square therefore y plus 2 is equal to square root of x and y is equal to square root of x minus 2 let us uh, examine whether this option is available or not it can be clearly seen in the second option the first option is minus root x minus 2 second option is root x minus 2 third option is 1 by x plus 2 whole square and the fourth option is root of x plus 2 so it is uh, very easy to identify that the second option is the right option so root x minus 2 y is equal to root x minus 2 that is g of x is equal to root x minus 2 is the required reflection of f of x with respect to the line y is equal to x in the next question he is asking us to have to produce the range of a particular function let us observe the function f of x is equal to in the present question the function given is f of x is equal to tan of pi into integral part of x by 1 plus sin cos x sin of cos x where this particular symbol represents the integral part of x or the greatest integer function the greatest integer less than x yes well the first option given is open interval minus infinity to infinity minus closed interval 0 to tan 1 the second option is open interval minus infinity to infinity minus closed interval tan 2 to 0 right open interval options the third option is closed interval tan 2 to tan 1 and the last option is just singleton set containing 0 let us see actually it looks that there has been a big definition for this of course while representing or noticing that range it is a very easy matter whatever might be the value of x integral part of x square minus x is surely always an integer by the very name itself indicates by the very definition of that particular function indicates that uh, integral part of x square minus x is surely an integer say n let it be some n hence it is tan pi by something tan pi by something hence uh, but tan n pi tan n pi by what is tan n pi is 0 so whatever you take the value of x numerator is 0 and denominator is non zero hence it is 0 it is a constant function the range contains singleton set 0 only therefore what is the right option a fourth option is the right option for this function in the present question he is asking us to have the period of a particular function let us observe the function f of x is equal to half of mod sin x by cos x plus sin x by mod cos x let us see f of x is equal to the function given is half into mod sin x by cos x 
plus sin x by mod cos x. But about the period of this function, we all know that sin x and cos x are periodic functions with period 2 pi and mod sin x and mod cos x are with period pi. Almost all the four functions are available here mod sin x period pi, mod cos x period 2 pi, sin cos x period 2 pi, sin x 2 pi, mod cos x pi. So, to have the period of this entire combination, we are supposed to have the LCM of pi and 2 pi, which is 2 pi. Therefore, the period of the function given is 2 pi. Is it available in the among options? Of course, it is available. First option is pi, second option is 2 pi, third option is pi by 2, fourth option is pi by 3. Therefore, we notice that the second option among the given is the right option that is period 2 pi. An interesting question comes before us. The value of the parameter alpha for which the function f of x equal to 1 plus alpha x, alpha is not equal to 0, is the inverse of itself is first option minus 2, second option minus 1, third option 1, fourth option 2. From our earlier algebra, we could have noticed some self invertible functions. Among the list of those second self invertible functions, we can easily recollect that f of x is equal to 1 minus x is self invertible. How and why f of x is equal to 1 minus x? You see, we find f inverse of x. F inverse of x can also be again f1 minus x. It is very easy matter of algebraic uh, uh, transformations to have that f inverse x is equal to 1 minus x. It is a famous function. So, alpha is therefore equal to minus 1. Alpha is therefore equal to minus 1. Even if you want to have the proof of this one, uh, we do not know about f inverse x. Let f inverse of x is equal to y. Then x is equal to f of y, then x is equal to 1 minus y implies y is equal to 1 minus x, y is nothing but f inverse of x is equal to 1 minus x. Therefore, f inverse is equal to f. Therefore, f is self invertible. There is another way of self check for this function. Why is it possible to recollect that f of x equal to 1 minus x is self invertible? There has been a basic thought of in, uh, recognizing a self invertible function. What is that? Let us uh, now recall that if f of x is equal to ax plus b by cx minus a, coefficient of x in the numerator and the constant term in the denominator, the ratio is minus 1 whenever such thing happens, then we have noticed that f inverse is equal to f. Can this be applied here? Why not? You take it. f of x is equal to 1 minus x or minus x plus 1. This is by 0 x plus 1. You can take, come on, observe the ratio of coefficient of x in the numerator and the constant term in the denominator. It is minus 1. Hence, surely it is self invertible. Therefore, even if you are able to recollect that this is self invertible, you can easily busy believe that uh, f of x equal to 1 minus x is self invertible. Hence, uh, for 1 plus alpha x to be self invertible, we need to have alpha as minus 1. Hence, uh, the second option is the right option because the first option is minus 2, second option is minus 1, third option is 1 fourth option is 2 among all of them. The right option is the second option that is alpha is equal to minus 1. In the next question, we are now asked to have range of a some special function. What is the function given? f of x is equal to x square plus 1 by x square plus 1. The first option is 
closed interval 1 to infinity, second option is closed interval 2 to infinity, third option is closed interval 3 by 2 to infinity and the fourth option is open interval minus infinity to infinity. It is an interesting case to recognize or to notice the range of this function. Let me write this f of x as x square plus 1 plus 1 by x square plus 1 minus 1. The new item I have added and deleted is 1 and minus 1. It makes no harm to the definition of the function. Well, what benefit we are going to get if we are right, if we write a perfect like that? Observe this part. This looks like y plus 1 by y, a plus 1 by a, k plus 1 by k, x plus 1 by x. From our earlier algebra, we notice that f of x is equal to x plus 1 by x always lies between 2 to infinity union minus infinity to minus 2. If x is positive, it lies between 2 and infinity, closed interval 2 to infinity. Uh, let us recall that matter. Let us uh, remember that if f of x is equal to x plus 1 by x is equal to some y, say multiply it with x, x square plus 1 is equal to x y, x square minus x y plus 1 is equal to 0. As x is real, the discriminant must be greater than or equal to 0. That is b square minus 4 ac greater than or equal to 0. This means that y does not lie between minus 2 and plus 2. That is y belongs to open interval minus 2 to minus 2 union 2 to infinity. It is a very easy matter to recollect that. Buddy by what is y? x plus 1 by x. The expression x plus 1 by x always lies in this particular domain, in this particular uh, real part, minus infinity to minus two union 2 to infinity. Here we have to notice one more thing. If x is negative, then it lies behind minus 2. If x is positive, it lies beyond 2, that is more than 2. Anyway, if x is positive, minimum value is 2. If x is negative, maximum value is minus 2. This we can easily recollect from our earlier algebra. What is the relation between that concept and this question? x square plus 1. In the place of x there, we have x square plus 1 here. Therefore, this particular part lies between 2 to in lies between 2 and infinity. So, minus 1 means it belongs to closed interval 1 to infinity. What is the range of this function? Closed interval 1 to infinity. Let us now notice the important thing that we must recollect notice that it lies between closed interval 1 and 1, lies in the interval closed interval 1 to infinity. An expression of the form x plus 1 by x, a plus 1 by a, k plus 1 by k always lies in but the particular union of intervals. But here we are assured that x square plus 1 is strictly positive. x square is a perfect square, non-negative. So, 1 plus x square is strictly positive. A positive number in the form, the number plus 1 by that number should lie in the interval, closed interval 2 to infinity. That, But this minus 1 therefore belongs to closed interval 1 to infinity. Therefore, the correct option among the given is the first option that is the closed interval 1 to infinity. In the next question, it is also another question to have the range of the given function and the function given is f of x is equal to modulus of x minus 1 plus mod x minus 2 plus mod x plus 1 plus mod x plus 2 for all x belongs to closed interval minus 2 to 2. The first option is closed interval 6 to 8. Second option is closed interval 2 to 4. Third option is closed interval 0 to 4. The fourth option is the set containing 1 and 2.
to have the range of this function we have to study the nature of f of x in various parts of the domain the actual domain given is a closed interval minus 2 to 2 let us now divide the domain in different cases in case 1 what happens when minus 2 less than or equal to x less than minus 1 what happens f of x is equal to x is less than minus 1 so x minus 1 is less than minus 2 so x minus 1 is negative mod x minus 1 is therefore 1 minus x again x is less than minus 1 x minus 2 is less than minus 3 so x minus 2 is again negative mod x minus 2 is 2 minus x x is less than minus 1 x plus 1 is less than 0 x plus 1 is less than 0 means mod x plus 1 is minus x minus 1 x is less than minus 1 x is greater than minus 2 x is greater than minus 2 so x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 0 x plus 2 greater than or equal to 0 means mod x plus 2 is x plus 2 let us see what is going to happen plus x minus x plus 1 minus 1 2 plus 2 4 4 minus 2x 4 minus 2x see this is f of x in this case x is greater than or equal to minus 2 x is less than minus 1 so minus x is greater than 1 minus 2x is greater than 2 therefore this is greater than or equal to 6 this is the first case therefore the range definitely lies above 6 among the given options that interval which lies above 6 is the first option only that is the easy way to trace it it can be made clear even if you consider the remaining cases also that is minus 1 less than x less than 1 what happens in this case minus 1 less than x less than 1 and one more thing 1 less than x less than 2 if you can trace the different cases for these part simple parts of the expression you can easily notice that closed interval 6 to 8 is the correct option as we could have already noticed that option A is the only option available for which the range lies above 6 and there is no option none. If at all the fourth option is given as none then we consider these cases and calculate in a, delete, in a, in a detailed manner. In this case, it is not necessary for us. Therefore, we notice that the, the first option is the correct option that is closed interval 6 to 8 is the range of the function. In the next question, we require the domain of the given function. The function given is f of x is equal to square root of log of 1 by mod sin x minus 1 to the base phi. Let us see what is the function given f of x is equal to square root of log of one by mod sin x minus one here we require the domain that is we require the place where that x should lie so that f of x is defined conveniently let us have a look over that. The first precaution that you may have to take is a logarithmic function is there. Though the quantity inside the logarithm must be strictly positive. That is mod sin x minus 1 must be strictly positive. We all know that mods, modulus of a particular real number is always non-negative. Therefore, we are assured of the fact that mod sin x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. No doubt here we have to see that mod sin x minus 1 is greater than 0. Mod sin x minus 1 is greater than 0. This thing we have to take the precaution that is 
mod sin x minus 1 not equal to 0 that is sin x not equal to 1 that is x not equal to pi by 2. A minimum requirement that is uh, x not equal to pi by 2. By looking at this, the first thing we have noticed. Secondly, this entire function lies under square root. Therefore, we should have log of 1 by mod sin x minus 1 greater than or equal to 0. Greater than or equal to 0. That is, 1 by mod sin x minus 1 greater than or equal to 1 implies mod sin x minus 1 less than or equal to 1. Uh, mod sin x minus 1 less than or equal to 1. Here, x so it is uh, x should lie between uh, 0 and pi by 2. 0 and pi by 2. Here, not equal to pi by 2, we have already we had, therefore, closed interval, left closed and right open interval 0 to pi by 2 is the required option. Required option. In the next question, the values of f of x is equal to 3 sin root of pi square by 16 minus x square lie in the interval. This is the question. The first option is open interval 0 to 3 by root 2. Second option is minus 3 by root 2 to plus 3 by root 2. Third option is closed interval 0 to 3 by root 2. Fourth option is minus 3 by root 2 to 3 by root 2. The given function is f of x is equal to 3 into sin of root of pi square by 16 minus x square lie in the interval. Good. Let us first observe the domain of the function that is the values, values of x for which it is defined first of all. By noticing that we trace the values of this f of x that is the range of f of x lies. Here, pi square by 16 minus x square must be greater than or equal to 0. That is x square minus pi by 4 whole square less than or equal to 0. It should lie between minus pi by 4 and pi by 4, but this must be positive. Therefore, root of pi square by 16 minus x square belongs to closed interval 0 to pi by 4 as it must be positive. As this must be positive, root of pi square minus x square belongs to closed interval 0 to pi by 4. Therefore, sin of this belongs to 0 to 1 by root 2. 3 into sin of this belongs to 0 to 3 by root. Hence, the correct option is the third option, closed interval 0 to 3 by root 2. Now, we are given again another new question, f of x is equal to minus 1 by mod x minus 2. For all x not equal to plus or minus 2, f of x is equal to. In this question, he is asking specially the domain of x for which f of x is greater than or equal to 1. What happens when it is greater than or equal to 1? The first option is open interval minus 2 to 2. Second option is closed interval minus 1 to 1. Third option is left open interval minus 2 to minus 1 union closed interval 1 to 2. And the fourth option is uh, none. We should have f of x is greater than or equal to 1 minus 1 by mod x minus 2 greater than or equal to 1. Minus 1 by mod x minus 2 is greater than or equal to 1. That is, minus 1 by mod x minus 2 minus 1 
greater than or equal to 0. That is minus 1 minus mod x plus 2 by mod x minus 2 greater than or equal to 0. Minus 1 plus 2 is 1. Therefore, 1 minus mod x by mod x minus 2 greater than or equal to 0. Multiplying in both the sides with minus 1, we will be having mod x minus 1 by mod x minus 2 less than or equal to 0. By applying general sign technique, we can easily notice that mod x minus 1 by mod x minus 2 is less than or equal to 0 if and only if mod x belongs to closed interval 1 to 2. Mod x belongs to closed interval 1 to 2. Mod x belongs to closed interval 1 to 2. That is 1 less than or equal to mod x less than or equal to 2. Again, we shall have two inequalities from this. What are they? One is mod x greater than or equal to 1 and other is mod x less than or equal to 2. Let us have it. Mod x greater than or equal to 1 and mod x less than or equal to 2. That is x less than or equal to minus 1 or x greater than or equal to minus 2 here and minus 2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2. By following this, x should not lie between minus 1 and 1. From this, x should lie between minus 2 and plus 2. By clubbing all these things, we notice that the correct option is minus 2 to minus 1 union 1 to 2. This is uh, the actual domain of x should lie, that should lie, so that f of x is greater than or equal to minus 1. It looks so simple, but 2 to 3 constraints are to be kept in mind to trace the domain of this. This is the right option. This is the right option. In the next question, mod sin x plus cos x is equal to mod sin x plus mod cos x. Then what is the quadrant in which x lies? First option is first quadrant. Second option is first and third quadrants. Third option is second and fourth quadrants. And the fourth option, none. The condition given is mod sin x plus cos x is equal to mod sin x plus mod cos x. We can easily recognize that this happens when and only when both sin x and cos x are of the same sign or at least one of them becomes 0. If both are positive, sin x plus cos x is positive, mod sin x plus cos x is sin x plus cos x. Sin x is positive, mod sin x is sin x, mod cos x is cos x. If both are negative, then sin x plus cos x is negative, mod of this is minus sin x minus cos x. Similarly, sin x is negative, mod sin x is minus sin x, mod cos x is minus cos x as both are negative. In that case, they happens. And it can happen when it, either of them becomes 0 also. So, let us see the quadrants in which both sin x and cos x happen to be of the same sign, of the same sign. In the first quadrant, sin x is positive, cos x is positive. In the third quadrant, sin x is negative, cos x is negative. Sin x is negative, cos x is negative. Hence, both of them will be of the same sign that happens when the x belongs to, uh, they belong to either q1 or q3. Turn to the right option. The second option is the right option. It can belong to either first quadrant or third quadrant. In the next question, a real function f satisfies the condition that 2 into f of x, y is equal to 
एफ ऑफ एक्स होल पोर वाई प्लस एफ ऑफ वाई होल पोर एक्स फॉर ऑल रियल एक्स एंड वाई इट इज गिवन दैट एफ ऑफ वन इज टू एंड वट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ सिग्मा एफ ऑफ के के इज इक्वल टू वन टू टेन द फर्स्ट ऑप्शन इज वन जीरो टू फोर सेकेंड ऑप्शन इज वन थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी थ्री थर्ड ऑप्शन इज फोर जीरो नाइन फोर फोर्थ ऑप्शन इज टू जीरो फोर सिक्स the condition given for the function to follow is 2 into f of x y is equal to f of x whole power y plus f of y whole power x we are given an additional information also that is f of 1 is equal to 2 let us make use of this condition to trace f of x what is f of x what f of x is it is so beneficial for us to have the value yes taking y is equal to 1 what is going to happen x into 1 x 2 into f of x is equal to f of x whole power 1 plus f of 1 whole power x as we have taken y as 1 therefore 2 into f of x is equal to f of x plus f of x plus 2 power x as f of 1 is 2 if you bring f of x this side what is going to happen f of x is equal to 2 power x f of x is equal to 2 power x let us now make an attack on the required what is required actually sigma f of k k is equal to 1 to 10 it seems 10 is equal to f of 1 plus f of 2 plus etc etc f of 10 is equal to 2 power 1 plus 2 square plus 2 cube plus etc etc 2 power 10 surely it is a geometric progression there are 10 terms here the sum of all those 10 terms is by the famous formula a into r power n minus 1 by r minus 1 that is 2 into what is 2 power 10 One zero two four minus one by one. Ten twenty four minus one is ten twenty three. Two into ten twenty three is two zero four six. It is surely available among the given options. What is the right option? Option D is the right option. So the answer is two zero four six. So to have the correct answer, this simple idea helps us a lot. by taking y is equal to 1 we are able to have directly what f of x is in this question we are given two functions one is g of x is equal to 1 plus root x and another function f is not directly given but f of g of x is equal to 3 plus 2 root x plus x then what is f of x first option is 1 plus 2 x square second option is x square plus 2 third option is x plus 1 fourth option is x plus 2 so we are supposed to have what f of x is let us use the given items what is g of x g of x is equal to 1 plus root x another thing is f of g of x is what is f of g of x it is 3 plus 2 root x plus x and we want to have what is f of x what is f of x let us use it f of g of x means 1 plus root x is equal to 3 plus 2 root x plus x at this place let me take this 1 plus root x as some y then root x is equal to 
y minus 1 and x is equal to y minus 1 whole square. Use these things here in this step. What are we going to have? f of y is equal to 3 plus 2 root x. What is root x? y minus 1 plus what is x? y minus 1 whole square. You expand all these things 3 plus 2y minus 2 plus y square minus 2y plus 1. What is going to happen? Minus 2y and plus 2y. 3 plus 1, 4 minus 2 is 2. Hence, it is y square plus 2. What do we have? f of y is equal to y square plus 2. It does mean to say that f of x is equal to x square plus 2. And it is surely available in the given options. What is the right option? The second option is the given option, the right option. That is f of x is equal to x square plus 2. The only thing here that you have to notice to trace f of x is you replace 1 plus root x by some y. Thereby, you can imagine what f of x is. In this question, we are given two functions f of x equal to ax plus b and g of x is equal to cx plus d. You observe both are linear functions with a not equal to 0 and c not equal to 0. Assuming that a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 2, if f circle g of x is equal to g circle f of x, then what happens to the nature of c and d? First option, c and d are arbitrary. Second option, c is equal to 1 and d is arbitrary. Third option, c is arbitrary and d is equal to 1. Fourth option, c is equal to 1 is equal to d. That is the question. What are the functions given? f of x is equal to a x plus b, g of x is equal to c x plus d, f circle g of x is equal to g circle f of x, and also a is equal to 1, b is equal to 2. And also a is equal to 1, b is equal to 2. Let us use it. f circle g of x is equal to g circle f of x is given, is not it? What is f circle g of x? f of g of x. What is g circle f of x? g of f of x. What is f of c x plus d? a into c x plus d plus b is equal to what is g of a x plus b? c into a x plus b plus d a into c x, a into c x we can cancel them. You are having a d plus b is equal to b c plus d. Now, you use a is 1, b is 2, 1 into d, d, b is 2, b is 2, 2 c plus d, 2 c plus d, a d plus b is equal to b c plus d. Therefore, d and d go away leaving you 2 c is equal to 2 therefore c is equal to 1 and no further information has been given to have the value of d. So, the value of d at any case or at any instant will not obstruct you to find c. So, d is arbitrary. Any real value can be taken by d. Therefore, c is equal to 1 and d is arbitrary is the right option. The process of calculation itself, we trace that the value of c is 1 and d can be any real value. Therefore, c is 1 and d is arbitrary, it can take any real value. That is the right option. In this question, 2 into f of x minus 1 minus f of 1 minus x by x is equal to x, then what is f of x? The first option is 1 by 3 into 2 into 1 plus x plus 1 by 1 plus x. Second option is 
2 into x minus 1 minus 1 minus x by x. Third option x square plus 1 by x square plus 3 and fourth option is none. 2 into f of x minus 1 minus f of 1 minus x by x is equal to x. This is a tricky question. Let us first of all replace x here by 1 minus x. We are supposed to have f of x. f of here two expressions are here. We have to get 1 by using that. Let us first replace x by 1 bus replace x by 1 by x. What are you going to have? 2 into f of 1 by x minus 1 minus f of 1 minus 1 by x by 1 by x is equal to 1 by x. That is 2 into f of 1 minus x by x. If you multiply both numerator and denominator by x, what is going to happen? Minus f of x minus 1 is equal to 1 by x. Is equal to 1 by x. That is the thing that happens when you replace x by 1 by x. Let me call this 1, this 2. Let us first get f of x minus 1 from 1 and 2. Of course, by eliminating f of 1 minus x by x between these two equations. What happens? Let us see. Let me multiply the first equation with the 2. What do we have? 4 into f of x minus 1 minus 2 into f of 1 minus x by x is equal to 2x. And second equation, you just copy that second equation without any change. Minus f of x minus 1 plus 2 into f of 1 minus x by x is equal to 1 by x. Is equal to 1 by x. You add these two. What is going to happen? We are able to get 3 into f of x minus 1 is equal to 2x plus 1 by x. Implies f of x minus 1 is equal to one third of 2x plus 1 by x. Well, this is f of x minus 1, but not f of x. We should get f of x. How to get it? Well, in this one, let me take x minus 1 as some y. Right in terms of y? f of y is equal to 1 by 3 into, come on, think of x minus 1 is y. So, x is y plus 1. 2 into y plus 1 plus 1 by y plus 1. That is 1 by 3 into 2 into y plus 1 plus 1 by y plus 1. This is f of y. But I want f of x. What is f of x? 1 by 3 into 2 into x plus 1 plus 1 by x plus 1 we are able to have a perfect directly by with the simple manipulation we uh, with the simple transformation we are able to get a perfect directly this is a perfect and of course among the given options the first option is the right option